as a much younger envoy, Nigerian envoy, and you're here now. I want you to, to share with us what's the contrast between then and now. I mean, in, from your experience, you uh, share with us I mean, the basic contrast between then and now. Well, well I, I didn't serve in Nigeria during the 90s, but I was a desk officer in, in Norway, so I followed the situation closely uh, through the 1990s. And, uh, I mean, you have uh, very obvious differences. It was a military regime at the time. Now you have a civilian government and a democratic uh, constitution, and uh, we are in the middle of an election process. So that's one obvious uh, difference. Then, of course, there has been a lot of economic developments and, uh, and uh, political developments uh, in a country which is the, the, the biggest economy, the biggest population of the continent, uh, uh, a continental superpower. But also that has been changing through, I mean, from the 90s to the early, um, early part of this century until today. Uh, at least I see it in a sort of sequence where um, the, the current uh, internal problems in, uh, in a certain sense has uh, reduced uh, Nigeria's uh, superpower position on the African continent. And I think that's extremely important, uh, and I see it in developments now, Nigeria regaining that position in the AU in, in, and in the UN. So uh, to have its rightful place internationally. Okay, from the background check also, uh, we know that you've served in quite several other African countries. You know, there have been engagement between uh, Norway and those countries. And Norway, it's interesting, it was not a colonial power in Africa. So your contact with Africa, the interface with Africa, how has it been so far? It's been, um, I mean, it's different um, reasons for the African-Norwegian relations. As for Nigeria, uh, we started the uh, stockfish trade with Nigeria in the 1890s. Um, many people believe, as I mean, 1980s, but it's 1890s. Um, to uh, mainly to the to the southeast of the country, so it, that's a traditional trade. Trade has been uh, a virtue of um, of relations with the African continent for for centuries, as we are a, a big shipping nation. So we have been having a strong shipping industry, traveling on on the African continent for 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 centuries, as I said. started with the development of very strong Norwegian support for the liberation struggles uh, all over the continent. Um, strong support in particular to the liberation in uh, southern Africa, uh, up and to including the um, support to the ANC for against apartheid. And uh, combined with uh, support for the liberation struggle, uh, the development of the development cooperation um, uh, um, emphasis in, in, uh, in foreign policy in, in European countries and in the West, uh, to Norway uh, establishing relations with the countries whom we supported in Southern Africa and East Africa for, for independence, and then we continued with a very strong development cooperation policy. So we, have, um, we are the um, uh, first country to reach 1% of GDP for development assistance, and we're continuing with, with that 1%, which means we have uh, a number of uh, development cooperation projects through, through the African continent. Okay, okay. Um, you have been roughly three years old since your latest posting as a full-blown ambassador to, to Nigeria. What in this period, uh, what, how have you managed to, I mean, your vision, the diplomatic vision for this country, the two, two nation relationship? <coughs> what grounds have you covered and what challenges have you experienced? Well, my, my ambition was to, to deepen and strengthen the relations um, as, as much as I could help um, in that process. Um, of course, the political relations will always be uh, very important. Uh, 
we as diplomats can only nurture and help the political relation strengthen itself. So um, what, has, uh, what has been an achievement um, in deepening the relations is that we've had uh, our foreign minister visiting here twice since I arrived, the Nigerian foreign minister visiting Norway twice since I arrived. We've had numerous ministerial visits going both ways. And we are continuing, we're having a, a deputy minister coming in for the Nigerian International uh, Petroleum uh, Summit uh, later this month. And we are working on, on I, I, we, we, we have also um, uh, ministers coming for what is called a Nor shipping, a big uh, shipping conference in Norway in June. So we're working on uh, strengthening the, the bilateral political relations between the two countries, which then is, is the opening, I mean, the door opener for stronger trade, business, and, uh, and the cooperative um, uh, cooperation between the two countries. Unlike Norway, Nigeria is multi-ethnic. You have a mix, and uh, this has given rise to some fundamental challenges. I believe you must have traveled around to Nigeria, different regions, and have interacted with different representatives of the ethnic and all that. What, um, what sense do you take from your travel around Nigeria and um, your appreciation of the fundamental challenges of nationhood mm. of Nigeria? Is Norway, uh, not, Norway is, uh, not more ethnic? Well, we have uh, three languages and two nationalities or ethnic groups. Okay. Okay, so, if you travel around Nigeria, what sense do you take from your trips? It's, as you say, a very diverse country. Um, and um, as someone said, 250 ethnic groups and still counting. It's, uh, it's uh, that diversity, um, and as the slogan goes, the unity in diversity. It's sometimes difficult. Um, and... Um, I think, I mean, going back to um, to uh, AU summit a few years ago, uh, former uh, President Gaddafi said that uh, Nigeria would the next be the next country to to uh, to split because of these uh, different differences in ethnicity, religion, and so so on and so forth. That that common common interest is uh, is uh, quite important for for for, for Nigeria to. To, to keep together, but I, I, there is a need, I believe, uh, to, uh, to, to strengthen the uh, feeling of nationalism, Nigerian nationalism, because there are different kinds of nationalism. You have ethnic nationalism, which could be broken down into the different ethnic groups, and then you have uh, the bigger national, uh, or the Nigerian nationalism. And uh, it's uh, extremely important to nurture every aspect of that. Um, uh, it, it goes beyond uh, every time the national football team, the Super uh, Eagles or the Super Falcons play. It has to be on a daily basis that you find a common benefit of, of, of staying together. And uh, I believe there obviously is a common benefit for Nigeria to stay as one, uh, one strong uh, power on the African continent which could use its influence uh, beyond Nigeria. Because what happens in Nigeria is so important for the rest of the continent. I think these coming elections, um, hopefully going to be peaceful and democratic, and uh, uh, that will mean a lot as an example to the rest of West Africa and, and, to, and beyond to the rest of the continent. Because if Nigeria, someone said, I think it was during a World uh, Bank uh, meeting last year, if Nigeria fails, um, uh, Africa will fail, and if Africa fails, uh, also the rest of the world is uh, is going to be affected. So Nigeria is is too important to fail. Now, uh, one of the important uh, strong points of Norway are uh, strong institutions underpin Norwegian democracy or Norwegian monarchy. Now. From your view, do we have, a, because one of our challenges is when the debate goes, do we need strong men or strong institutions? And do you feel that Nigeria has a lot to learn from Norway, the Norwegian model or template of governance? 
it's very difficult to compare. I mean, we are a nation of five million people, mm -hmm. uh, mainly one ethnic group, a mm -hmm. uh, lot of unity. Um, so it's very difficult to, to compare, but I, I, I still think that uh, institutions, uh, solid um, administrative, political institutions is more important than the, than the strong men. Sometimes in development history, if you have serious problems, there might be a need for a strong man. But generally, strong institutions, internal democracy in the political parties uh, in, and, and organization based on, on, uh, on membership and so on, uh, organizational skills to, to which, which penetrate, penetrate society is, is extremely important. It's obviously, as you say, uh, the strength of the Norwegian society that uh, it's not dependent on individuals, but uh, on whoever is in government, uh, whoever is in, in the uh, bureaucracy, uh, whether it's Minister of Defense or, or, or Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, it's more or less the same policy being and, and, and rules and regulations which are working. And we don't change when there, there are uh, political, um, when, they, when we have elections. So strong institutions. Um, and um, we are looking into cooperation with Nigerian authorities on uh, the government on a uh, number of institutional capacity building measures. Bilateral relations, one key factor there is trade. What is the situation between Norway in terms of trade balance and uh, between Norway and Nigeria? The trade balance is very skewed, and uh, it's it's uh, the bulk of our companies are delivering services to the oil industry in in Nigeria, basically uh, offshore subsea, um, where we have a um, very strong sector in Norway. And, and in shipping um, and um, using uh, the experiences we have in developing an over oil industry, we have had uh, an advantage in. So um, you have uh, Nigerians who buy and build ships in Norway, while uh, as we are basically uh, trading in the same commodities, there's, uh, there's not much uh, Nigeria can sell to Norway. Uh, as long as the agricultural sector is not um, developed to to be um, export oriented, which will take a while in in the current uh, diversification drive. Do we do we engage you on this uh, skewed trade balance? Because most countries would not like the trade balance to be skewed. They want to make effort to achieve some kind of balance. Is there any engagement between Nigeria and Norway? to address both agricultural or any other areas coming up? It's an issue which is regularly raised by the Nigerian authorities in our discussions. And we also take it upon ourselves as an embassy to try to, um, to help through cooperation with the Nigerian Norwegian um, um, Business Association in, uh, in Lagos to see and try to find areas where Nigeria could export things to Norway uh, so that we, we, we get a better tra um, trade balance between our two countries. But because to have one which is th that unbalanced is very unfortunate in the long run. Mm -hmm. It should be a more balanced trade balance. Can you put any figures to this? It's, it's, it's very difficult, but um, because the, the, the structure of, uh, of um, uh, international companies now is... Uh, in, is uh, I mean, some Norwegian companies have their headquarters in Malaysia or in, uh, in the US or uh, uh, in Switzerland or different places. But we, we, we believe that um, the, 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 the annual trade between our two countries are in, uh, in, uh, in double-figure billions. I mean, you're looking cool and calm and no stress and all that. I, I, I love traveling in the country and I love going out, meeting people, I mean, uh, walking the streets, talking to people. Mm. Um, that's, I mean, some people, some foreigners say that they, uh, they get their uh, grassroots uh, information from taxi drivers. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, the taxi drivers know what to say. Mm -hmm. 
but if you go on the street and talk to people, you get a... Correct pause. Uh, you have a possibility to, to, to try to understand more. So when, whether I'm in Sokoto or in Katsina or in Lagos, I try to walk the streets and talk to people. You get a some kind of... Uh, hopefully better understanding, although, I mean, they, they treat you as a, as a foreigner. You, you have the possibility of engaging, engaging with people. Okay. Have you managed to pick up enough for local languages? Can you speak another language now? I had uh, quite some difficult uh, understanding pitching English when I arrived. I, I think I have improved. <laughs> uh, but on local languages, no, I haven't been able to do it. I've been traveling so many places, so it's difficult to... I try to get, uh, I mean, the greeting mm -hmm. uh, phrases and so on wherever I travel, but um, it's, uh, uh, it's mostly going, I mean, I'm only speaking to people in English. Have you developed any, t any taste for local dishes or delicacies? And which? I, mean, uh, I have to say, I mean, I, I have to say that my favorite is related to, to stockfish and a stockfish <laughs> dish. <laughs> but um, that's my duty to say. I mean, to, to but uh, no, I think uh, I mean the the chol of rice is uh, something which is uh, well known. I mean, uh, not only here but in the neighboring countries as well. If you are not a diplomat, because you've had quite a long career, what other profession would you have uh, gone after? I'm a lawyer by profession. So I, uh, I did the work uh, and um, I'm a specialist in labor law. So I, uh, from that I, I, I nurture a good uh, relationship with the uh, Nigerian trade unions because I have an interest in that. Um, but um, no, probably I would have been a journalist like yourself. <laughs> I once said that uh, when I reach a certain age, I will leave diplomacy and try to move into journalism. But uh, it's been so tempting to continue. Next month, actually, Nigeria will be heading into a major general election. It's been uh, generating some level of concern and anxiety. What do you, what message do you want to give to Nigerians ahead of that election? Use your right and possibility to influence. I mean, use your vote. Go to the polling stations and cast your vote. Look into the political programs and the issues uh, and, and the responses of the political parties and the different candidates to the political issues. Because that's what's important for every individual. What are the results and what are the policies which will relate to your daily life. So um, don't take um, just the slogans, but try to move into and, and question the politicians and look into their political programs before you cast your votes.